Sega. So yes. that old Sega logo. Yeah. It used to say Sega on yeah, the. Yeah, I remember. You remember that? Yeah, I was so a child. That was that was so intensive at the time that as much as <laughs> an eighth of the entire cartridge was dedicated no way. to that opening. For it to go Sega. Right, exactly right. That's yeah. amazing. Isn't that crazy to think? That's wild, dude. You gotta turn this down a little bit. <clears throat> Oh, because of my dulcet tones that I'm bringing to this game time. All right, well, that's not going to work. There we go. All right. This game is so good. All right, I got to sync while we're doing this. Hold on one second. I'm going to sync on the main menu. Going to, starting with continue. Ready? One, two, three. One, two, three. Three. Okay, we're good. Okay. Hey, Ellie, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. I think our levels are okay. You have a raspy voice I today. I do. I I played lots of shows this weekend, so I sound like I, I run a pub in in England somewhere. Why from just shouting at people? And I love what can I get you? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we're gonna play Two Point Hospital. Now, this was your request. Yes. You wanted to play Two Point I Hospital. I do. I always want to play Two Point Hospital. <laughs> okay, so uh, you can go ahead and start. Uh, uh, and this yes. is my save, so. You're gonna be. Oh, don't worry. Don't be critical. I'm gonna turn things around for you here. Is I'm it really? A, I'm oh. a good administrator. So I gotta tell you about this game. In um, so much as oh yes, look at it. So I grew up playing Theme Hospital, which is a bullfrog game. Never even heard of it. Are you serious? Yeah, never even heard of it. This is very much the spiritual successor of Theme of Theme Hospital. I just saw the Ferris wheel and I gasped. I was like, <laughs> I haven't seen that. That's like that's a really fun area. It, you know, it's funny because we actually recorded a game time that we scrapped because we chose a bad game. Yeah. We and and also we waited a while to put it out and we were talking about stuff like you were about to start Skill Tree. Yeah. But we played Overcooked. This actually <laughs> reminds me. The map reminds me of the Overcooked map. Oh yeah, similar with yeah. the graphics. What I'm gonna do, I think. I mean, you've already got three star on, stars on lower, bollo lower bollocks. Because I'm a good player. So I'm going to head into uh, fluttering. Yeah. So I never heard of this game. The first time I ever heard about it uh, was this year at E3. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it was um, like it, it, there's the, the PC gaming show, which is kind of shitty. <laughs> I mean, they have the big presentations for Xbox and they have the big presentations for, you know, PlayStation. And then they have just kind of like this PC gaming potpourri. And the best thing I thought to come out of it, well, there was a couple things. I got excited about this game, so I downloaded it and started playing it, yeah. as you can see by my many stars. Yes. And uh, then also there's a new version of Star Control, which if you watch the podcast, I've talked about mm -hmm. ad nauseum. Mm -hmm. And then the big hit was there is a shark RPG coming out. Oh, what? Where you're a shark and you like eat swimmers and then you can level up that's, like fins. That's very strong. <laughs> so that's a strong contender. Super excited about it. But this is, this is, I first learned about this at the PC gaming show. So, yeah. Look at you. You're like just soaring. I'm very good at this game. I play, I mean, so, so my sisters and I used to play Theme Hospital a lot. Like a lot. Get your bookcase in front of a window. Are you okay with that? Um, well, you know, it is an ideal. So I am going to move that. Have you, ever done, have you ever done that, like, you know, place where you've decorated? Is this like, uh. I have that currently happening right now. I have a record player that's in front of my window because I have nowhere else to put it. I have a bed that kind of the headboard overlaps a window a little bit. <laughs> and it's just like, a headboard for a bed is an expensive item to replace. So I've already hired us an assistant. This is, um, this is Laura Hulk. <laughs> Hello, Laura. Yeah, she has, um, it did say when I hired her that I should have stopped on a bit, but she has cheese for brains. But... <laughs> But she's very good at all these things, and she's very emotionally intelligent and motivated and stuff. But like the thing with this game is that you can't always get really good staff because it's expensive. I'm sure you know that. God, yeah. <laughs> so you have to staff everything. You have to get a GP, general practitioner. Yeah. So you've got to kind of balance out who you've got, like who's good at what. Now this is going to be useful to me, Kim Brass. She is, sorry. It's going to be useful to me because <laughs> she's she's also yes. a psychiatrist. Oh yeah. But she is a litterer, so I know you have to keep that in mind. Got to um, hire a janitor just to have follow around. Janitor. Yeah, so my sisters and I used to play Theme Hospital a lot. And actually, when I was home for RTX London, um, <laughs> like it was like the news... This is Franklin Butthurt. He's, gonna <laughs> <laughs> He's a part-time living room gymnast. You're getting way better names than I've ever gotten. There's also an Alfie Flob. Yeah, very good. Um, so... She, like it was like, yeah, the news of our family, even though she's just got engaged, which was arguably bigger news, and congratulations to her. Um, she was like, guys... <laughs> Uh, there's a new theme hospital. 
And we were like, what? And we like ran to Steam and then I was like, oh, it's like $30, but like I should get I should get it. And then we've discovered that I was the only one that had the capabilities of playing this because I had think in like in a fit of trying Why to be- Why should we fire extinguishers there? Oh, because things blow up. I don't think if that's actually a machine. Good. But machines blow up. The more fire extinguishers you put in, mm -hmm. the less they blow up. I see. You're like a pro at this, man. Oh, Pandora Curious! <laughs> takes, me, takes me like 20 minutes to get to the point where you are now. And so you unlock other areas too, and then you can open other hospitals. That's true, and you uh, you unlock through illnesses a lot of the time. If you cure illnesses, the new number um, one album then it never ends. Oh, yeah, I mean, you have to get to a point where you just decide to stop playing. Kind of like Stardew Valley, mm -hmm. otherwise it will take, take you. Well, my problem with this game when I've been that playing it so far is that it feels very linear. Like... It, it almost feels like it stays in a tutorial mode way longer than other games because it doesn't give you access to certain things and then you have to open a new hospital. Then you gotta go through all the like the light bulb head stuff, that, which will make sense as we play this. Uh, you have to go through all that stuff, build a ward and all that. Oh, like, look, oh. we need to build a ward right now. I'm gonna make him wait, but he needs some items. Give him some bench to wait. Yeah, I'm doing it. Oh, you got some silver benches. Nice. <laughs> very, <laughs> yeah, I paid. I paid. Very for that. nice. Um, yeah, I mean. Uh, such fun times playing this game, man. That it will probably out, not surprise you in the least. Yeah. I bought snack machines. Like, all the snack machines, I unlocked all of those before anything oh, else. Oh, yeah? It's important. It is important. Um, I was So, I was at RTX London, and I got a text from my sister, who, like, is in her 30s, by the way. Um, just like, hey, what is the, what's the password to your computer? <laughs> and I was like, and why is that? And she was like, I, I gotta play them hospitals. Ah, that's awesome. <laughs> I gotta play. And so now you're in a mode, you were just in a mode there where it showed, like, the aesthetics. Yes, like, how pretty map. everything is. Yeah. That's fun. You're not even in the, you're not into the part where the things get cold yet. No, like, temperature-wise. No, yeah. I haven't, I haven't touched any of that stuff yet. I've, I've, here's what I've done so far on the save that you're playing. Yeah. I basically built a successful ward, and then my last hospital was really based around psychiatry. Okay, yeah. Because, was that the, um, the rich one? That makes me laugh. When you have the the hospital in the really rich area of town, all their problems are psychiatric. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so did this growing up playing this in the UK? Yeah. And for those of you who are meeting Ellie for the first time, I don't know if you tell. Yeah. She's from the UK. A little bit. But uh. They did, like the, did the money aspect of the hospital throw you off at all? Oh, massively. I mean, that's part of like the joke in England is that everything here in this game costs money, and we're like, <laughs> that's so stupid. <laughs> Why would that ever have to happen? And like the I, hospital goes bankrupt. And then I moved and then... here. Yeah, but like you, you know, so you have to pay like thousands of dollars for psychiatric treatment. Mm -hmm. And um, it's that's way more real to me now, I'll and, say. And you want to make a profit too. Lily Grunt. <laughs> she would leave without you for a joke. What you doing, punching the camera? <laughs> Cheese for brains. What? When she, what's her, she covering her mouth in her photo. Yeah, some of their photos aren't great. That's okay. <laughs> this is part of, this is part of the charm. So you built a ward where now people can check in and get in beds and you filled it with windows, which I find to be interesting. And uh, then you had to have really, a person to They staff really it. like windows. Yeah, yes. I don't want to backseat administrate. Am I not doing a good, am I going too fast? You don't yet have a break room. Oh, I know. And then Also, you're really your bathroom architecture is kind of off the charts. Um, <laughs> look. They like toilets and they like sinks. I don't know. But you can't reach them. You can't reach them. No, I just saw not reachable. Wait, what? On your. Oh no, that's this. That's because I'm holding oh. this magazine rack currently. <laughs> magazine rack in the bathroom. How nice of you. Let's make this prettier. I just, I'm not gonna offer any advice. You are clearly better at this game than I am. I know I can construct more buildings, but it's a whole money. Okay, verbal diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a new illness here. That's verbal diarrhea. Um, if people can't stop talking about it. So yeah, they're gonna go to the pharmacy. But yes, you're right. I do need a break room. So there's fun diseases like there's some kind of what's the lightheaded one? Um, I think it is called lightheaded. Yeah, and you get a bulb for they come and they have bulbs for head, and then there's ones where they have sirens for heads. Yeah, no, that's when the, that's when there's an emergency. That's when they're like a VIP person. Oh, when you take one of those little quests. There's one that they're a clown, which is they just think they're really funny, and they have to go to psychiatric and be told that they're not. Oh, is that what yours is? Uh, I in, I think in this version, I don't know if you've seen it. They they look all look like Freddie Mercury. Oh, that's mock star. That's a very good one. Right. That they believe that they're they're a pop star. Yeah, they had that in um. The old game, Theme Hospital, everyone was dressed up as Elvis. <laughs> that Elvis makes a lot more sense. <laughs> I've never met anybody who thought they were Freddie Mercury. Dog paintings, all, always, everywhere. A couple of those, just in and around. If you had to, if you had to choose, though, would you be Elvis or Freddie if, Mercury? Well, neither had a great end. <laughs> right. Um, but probably Freddie Mercury, he's just cooler. 
Yeah. When uh, Ashley and I were on the Amazing Race, uh, we went through this small town in France where we changed trains. Yeah. And this tiny little town in France, and I couldn't figure out why, because the inscription was all in French, and I didn't have time to sit there and read it. Yeah. Uh, they had a statue of Freddie Mercury. And I was really? like, this is really interesting. Yeah. Oh, you already played on this. No, you did this. I watched you do all that. Highest seven step. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. It was me. So she's looking at her in the top right there. You've got your objectives for what you're supposed to do. Yeah. And you're currently hanging out good in the uh, staff morale. Yeah. I mean, that always goes down fast because I don't like to pay a whole bunch, which is sort of did not care for the smells as one walks You leveled your hospital up super fast. That's the part I have trouble with. And I think it's the windows yeah, it's the and the aesthetics. the prestige of your room. Yeah. yeah. So these, these, these dog pictures... <laughs> They help a lot. I don't. I, don't, I like to I don't, pepper them around. I don't even want you to see my other hospitals now. Oh, like really? Just boxes with snack machines. <laughs> in them and that's it. And then, of course, oh. silver benches. Well, yes. That, I like that that was a priority for you in your hospital management. Yeah, and you get like these case. And trophy cases that you really wanted to, people to know how well you were doing. Well, it's a very American hospital. Come on. <laughs> True. Yeah, like, we are the best doctors. Oh. We win awards. Freudian lips. What's this? Tendency to put pout excessively when faced with a camera. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love it. So it's like duck face. Basically. Um, so yeah, let's build one of those. Psychiatry? Yeah. How are we doing? Can we zoom out of here? Hey, man. And I think you want to rotate Q and E, I think. What I'm actually going to do is move with this. Get out of here. What are you doing? I'm moving. I didn't even room. know you could do that. <laughs> Damn it. Okay, I'm learning a lot. I'm not gonna play this game again. Yeah. That's unfortunate. Did this change your view of healthcare growing up? <laughs> like, did, were, you, were you fully prepared to come into the US medical care system? Oh yeah, absolutely. I, was, I knew exactly what I was getting myself into. Um, no, it's fun, like, this is the kind of thing that like, it was such a part of my childhood that me and my sister still like, quote this funny announcements. That's like, patient. There's one. Wow, perfect timing. Perfect. Patients are reminded, and then there's people like, P patients are reminded to not die in the corridors. <laughs> like, we had such fun playing this game. But like, this, I'm f okay at this game. My sister Jessie is like, she was always better at logical games. Like she, did you ever heard of, heard of a game called The Logical Journey of the Zumbinis? No. That was fantastic. Basically, you have to get these Zumbinis to a new, a new home because they've been invaded. <laughs> and, um, to do that, you have to go through a bunch of like logical quests that get harder and harder each time. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was just amazing at it, like such a quick logical mind. And I was always be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> "How do you play this?" This game sucks. Okay, you're one playing more. Lemmings. No, I always heard about Lemmings. Le though. Lemmings was a good like. Okay, so I think Adam Keish is gonna be. <laughs> Looks like Colton. My he does. Oh, Coltino. Uh, he's gonna be my psychiatrist because he's got two skills here in psychiatry, and he likes to skip rope with abandon. Yeah, looks like me and Colton had a baby actually. He's got my uh, hair. <laughs> great, great job. We got a training license. Good for us. So a big part of this game that isn't a. Uh -oh. oh, here are your clowns you're talking about. Clowns. Apparently they keep escaping from the traveling circus. Their hijinks can be a real nuisance. We need some new equipment to deal with them. The Orb Foundation have patented method for recalibrating the minds of clowns, supporting taking their rehabilitation back into society. If we can demonstrate to mold our own stuff. Okay, so we Ellie, gotta... do you have a fear of clowns? I don't love clowns. I wouldn't say I'm not. I don't have like a, you know your, your standard clownophobia or whatever it's called. Do you have any fears? Yeah, spiders. Get no. out of here, really. Spiders. Can't do spiders. Horrid, horrid things. Um, and then, like, kind this of. This is a totally new room. I've never seen this before. You have to train your staff. <laughs> nah. You is do. this how you do it? Yeah. So I then, always like, see that they have the ability to do it, but. Yeah, because then, so people who like aren't psychiatrists can become psychiatrists if you're in a pickle. What? By going to a training room? By being trained. Okay. I think like that's how psychiatry works, but okay. I like to make it nice in there. Posters. And while she's doing this, like every bit of the hospital still running. Like you see, the patient is now checking out of the ward. He's geared, oh, somebody's about to die. Yeah, he's dead. That's a bummer. That's a little bit of a bummer. Why didn't put any windows? Do you have any janitors? Yeah, I've got a couple. God, oh yeah, because so sometimes they turn into uh, the patients who die turn into ghosts, and your janitors have to suck them up with a little hoover. Yeah, I would say, and the only certain janitors have the skills to be a Ghostbusters. <laughs> yeah. But I would say most of my dead people turn into ghosts. Yeah, it seems to be a higher percentage than not. Um, Dr. 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 Dr.
new applicant in 14 days. I'm like, well, I'm learning so much about this watching you do it. Oh, really? Yeah, just because there's so many things like I was going through so fast. You know, I didn't see certain stuff like how often you get a new applicant for different staff positions. I mean, like, I'm telling you, I'm not that good at this game because, like, you have to plan it out so that you, all your diagnosis rooms are in one area. And, like, what are you doing? Just for efficiency? Yeah. If you're going in there, go in there. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can, like, pick people up and, like, just literally plop them in a room. Yeah, like, and they just, like, waggle around. There you go. <laughs> Is that a janitor? That's Perfect a janitor. Sure. Yeah. So like we could train someone. Let's do a training course. Ghost capture, for example. So we've got to get a guest trainer in to teach that. But uh, we can get Alfie Flob. It might not look like it, but this is a super dense game. It is. It oh. is. It's pretty dense. Okay, so we've got four patients with Mockstar coming in. It's an emergency. So I've got to throw down. Psychiatry, right? For them? Yeah, I've got to throw down some benches down here. Who? Was that me? No. Was that you? Nah, it's fine. Get out. They always say silence your cell phones and everything. It's just, it's just part of life to me. That's true. You Salty know? snack machine. Yeah! I got all the snack machines, I'm telling that you. makes people more... Actually, that's true. That's actually quite smart. It makes people, hung, it makes people thirsty. And then buy you more drinks. Them one of these. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> and like uh, Cheetos and a Red Bull. That's a healthy thing to have in a hospital. You went so American, you got like sponsored by a... Sponsored by all these corporations. So. <laughs> oh, oh, she's yeah. learning how to Excuse bust me? ghosts. I thought there was a ghost in that room. No, no. So this is our teacher, I think. And he's going to teach Alfie Flob how to bust some ghosts, some ghosts. So, so Ellie, before we worked together yeah. uh, on the vlog and when you you were my assistant for a year. Yep. Were you just mine for, for a year? Yeah. Was it, was it a full year? It was. Because I know the vlog was a full year, but. Yeah, I, so my first vlog more. that I worked on was your was the cell shading your car one. Oh, right. But then, yeah, we worked together up until April, up until after Skill Tree came out. But before that, you worked in production. Like, you were in the live action department, yeah. and you were one of the pro producers in there. Yes. And then worked in production before that. What was that cool, can you talk about that cool project you worked at before, right before you moved from the UK? Yeah. Uh, the last thing I worked on in England um, was a production for Alabu Rum, who wanted to prove to the world that, like, I just busted a little gut, like, a little rat there. Um, who wanted to prove that 30-year-olds, uh, millennials, love to enjoy Malibu and of not 13-year-olds not in the park. There you go. <laughs> and, um, Listen, I, I have Malibu at home, so. <laughs> well, okay. Oh, I mean, the numbers, by the way, the numbers over the people's heads show how many people are waiting for that yeah, room she's on, whatever room wait. she's Look on. Look at these Freddie Mercury's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. Um, yeah, so I worked for, uh, I look at... A big YouTube campaign for Malibu Rum, and where we took four, five, five um, social media and YouTube stars at the time in England, and we took them on an amazing road trip all around Europe that they kind of got to decide what they wanted to do. Um, but we went through 14 countries. Wow. And in like a bus, right? Or a in a, and I, yeah, so the crew, the production crew were all in a um, tour bus that was like supposed to be for basically from taking like big bands from London to Manchester to Edinburgh and back like mm -hmm. not for navigating the cobbled streets of Prague and uh, so that was an interesting interesting experience um, but it was amazing like we were producing everything on the fly we produced two two videos a week of, on, on the road our editors like we turned like you know how those tour buses or you can probably if you haven't like been in one you can imagine they, uh -huh. like have neon lights and like bars and poles and all yeah. this kind of stuff inside we gutted it and turned it into, it had an edit bay at the back. We had the capsules for sleeping in. Um, and we had, we turned the front kind of lounge bar area into our production office. And That's really cool. lived in that for two months. That's really cool. Yeah, it was pretty Yeah, I don't know if you saw, by the way, you unlocked the uh, clown clinic. Yes, yeah, so I have a clown clinic and a pans lab. Because these guys who have pans stuck on their heads. <laughs> of course. <laughs> so. I feel like the people who made this game just never studied medicine. I mean, I don't think that that was the like, the you know the kind of the key to this game mm -hmm. was that. But I'm glad that they made it. Simplified version. It'd be a little depressing if people came in with like <laughs> colon cancer. cancer. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be a little depressing. Tell the family that they have two days to live. Yeah, <laughs> and it feels like a while on the surface, like I said, it is more in depth. It does kind of feel like a younger person's game. Yeah. Doesn't necessarily mean it's not fun, though. Let me look at this. This is the, the dehumorifier. Oh, that's awesome. I haven't seen that before. Yeah, and see, this is where you got to throw in them fire extinguishers. 
just hot to him. Why? Because that's because because the the janitors have to like upkeep these um, machines, and they they will break. And if they explode and there's a patient inside, then the room is not usable, and you killed someone. But you and I started working together yeah. uh, because I had been looking for an executive assistant for like six months, mm -hmm. you know, and or like they, but basically the way that worked was they told me I had a head count. Like I literally have like nobody reporting to me directly. I like not the head of a department or anything like that. And so suddenly I had this one person reporting me this position. They kept asking me, are you filling this position? Are you filling this position? Oh, really? And I was like, oh. It was basically everyone else decided that you really needed a yeah. assistant. It was basically me and Gavin. People got tired of like waiting for us to reply to stuff. And uh, I've been looking for a while. And I met you on, it was a set of a million dollars butt, right? And it yes, was- Yes, that's right. Because that was what I, my main focus was working on that show. And you had, uh, we had this really cool interrogation room for the uh, Jason Bourne <laughs> scenario. One of my favorite episodes, actually. That was fun. We beat up the old people. Yeah, that was so fun. funny. Those, all those actors were so great. And uh, I remember I was like, who got this location? Because it was like a really cool one-way mirror interrogation room location. Yeah. And th that's when I met you. They said Ellie got it. And, yeah. And then I think we were working together probably, what, three or four months after that, right? Yeah. Yeah. And we had, I think... I remember, you might not remember this, but I remember the first time I sort of met you and talked to you was at, at like, my first RTX. And I didn't really, like, I, full disclosure, wasn't, I wasn't really a, a Rooster Teeth fan before I started working here. Mm -hmm. bit, that came later for me. And um, so I was just sort of chatting to you because you were like, hey, how's RTX going? And I was like, yeah, that's great, thanks. And we had this whole conversation about scuba diving and, um, yeah, these kind of, these jobs that I'd had before. And then I was like, so what do you do here? <laughs> <laughs> And Did I have like, an answer? You were like, oh, I'm the yeah, chief creative officer. And like, kind of, uh, hmm. you just had this moment of like, oh, you, huh. <laughs> and I was, like, I was like, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I didn't really, I don't know. And then, I'm, like, and then my friend walked up to me afterwards. I just think it was Patrick was like, that he buddy like started this company. And I was like, well, that's embarrassing for me. <laughs> <laughs> it is funny because it's like, we do take so much stuff for granted. Uh, I learned that in the, uh, I was reminded of that in the uh, when we put up the 15 year anniversary doc. Yeah, it's like I feel like I've told we should told those stories to we're blue in the face. Mm -hmm. But there were so many people who saw that doc and were like, "Oh, I didn't know this." Like, yeah, I didn't know you guys started in a spare bedroom in your house. I'm like, "What? How do you not know that?" It's like, but it's just because why would they? Have yeah, time? exactly. Does that room have a door? It does. It's right here. Thank okay. You. Thank you, though. <laughs> Where is it? It's just it's just there. Okay, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> Um, yeah, that was so. Yeah, and then we started. We started working together in in April, May or April, whenever you shall still change your call. Yeah, it was funny because that was also the first one where you slightly appeared. I remember you and I went through this whole thing of saying like, "Oh, you know, doing this vlog, and if you're going to be appearing uh, in it." I remember there was a long period of time, or not a long time, but it was like a month when we were working on stuff where you would duck out of the way. Yeah, remember? And you'd be like, "Oh, I can't get in the shot." And you're talking, I was like, yeah, don't, maybe don't do that. Because I just had a feeling the audience would really take to you whenever they Aww, met you. I think, yeah, I was just trying, I was like, I don't want to, I think there's one, I think it's the San Francisco one, maybe at the beginning. Yeah. Where like, <laughs> there's a couple of shots where I'm like in the background and then I jump out. Yeah. <laughs> I was just trying to, yeah. I didn't, at that point, I was like, I don't know if I'm supposed to avoid being in this thing or be in this thing, but I'm, I was very happy it worked out the way it did. Bungle. It's very fun. Wait. Does this need, that needs a dog. Pocket and you mentioned it briefly, but you actually box. did something really cool, something that I've never done but I've always wanted to do, where, was it, how old were you when you just said, ah, and you went off to Thailand? Uh, so, I was in my second year of university. Um, they told us right at the end of, I went to Bournemouth University, um, and did television production there, and they told us in our second year that, um, we had to do a, a work experience placement in order to pass our second year. And this was like right at the end of the year. I'm like, oh, what? <laughs> so, um, and I had already done when I was doing doing my A levels. I had done like I tried to try and get as much work experience as I could, um, un unpaid <laughs> and so legal of yeah. working in edit houses in London. So in places you know, big, big production edit houses that churn out everything for the BBC and ITV and Channel Four. And and my main job doing that was making people tea and toast most of the time yeah. and uh, running rushes like those big chunky old school tapes that they still use between the uh, between the different edit houses and you know running them to the vfx and running them back and so it was pretty cool but i was by the time i was 18 i knew 
central London like the back of my hand because I'd walked the whole thing. It is incredible, <clears throat> even to this day in production, how much they solve problems by just putting someone on it. Putting on the ground, yeah. Solving it with people. But my first ever job in... So I worked in live events at first, I did some award shows, but my first ever sort of production job was they put me on a plane to Romania to pick up some rushes and fly them home. That's really funny, because I had a friend who... Uh, he, uh, I, I haven't seen him in years, but he was working for a producer and the editor was in Paris, so he had to fly reels of film. It was a long time ago. He had to fly reels of film to the editor on vacation in Paris. He was like, cool, I get to go to Paris. He landed in Paris. Yep, turned and, him around. Yeah, they just put him right back on the same plane going back. That's amazing. He was just there to deliver it. Yeah, so I didn't, I wasn't, I had like one night in like a creepy hotel in, in Bucharest and then <laughs> got back on the plane the next day, but then I worked at that production company for a, for a bit. But yeah, so so I'd done this running, running around, you know, running around London thing already. And I knew exactly how that went. And wasn't really, didn't really feel like doing that again. So when they told us to find work experience, I, um, in my gap year between school and uni, had travelled a bit, and I'd gone to Thailand and just completely by chance, on a snorkeling trip, had met this British guy who lived and worked in Thailand and ran his own video company on this island called Koh Tao, um, where he made people's like scuba dive videos. So oh, that's a good business. Yeah. So, um, you know, you know, he was an amazing underwater videographer and photographer by that point. He's been doing it for years. And so he... You got to promote three people here and train three people. Yeah, I'm doing some trainings. I'm doing some trainings. Um, so he had... Uh, so I, he'd given me his email address because at that time he was thinking about coming back to, back to England and I was working there. So... Um, so I found his email address and emailed him and was like, hey, I have no idea if you still live in Thailand or if you still do what you do, but I would love to come and, you know, quote unquote, intern for you. Oh, great idea. And um, he said, yeah, why not? I checked that that was okay with the dean and I was went out there for like four days later. What's that number that keeps popping up on the top right? It's up like, here? Yeah. That's like, the, like, there's a long queue. Oh, like a big okay. Wait. So, so I plopped another one down here. Another GP? Another GP's office. GP's kind of like the gatekeeper for the whole hospital. Yeah, Almost everyone everybody has goes. to go through him. Yeah. It's kind of annoying. Because you get a really bad big line. Um, so yeah, so then I was out in Thailand for... I was, well, I was there for about three, three months and I got my dive master, scuba diving and stuff, which was amazing. And I had every intention of staying there, much like many, well, like, American, English and Australians you'll meet who just got on holiday and never left. Yeah, that's like that in Hawaii as well. Like when you go to some of the places in Hawaii, the story's always the same. It's like, well, how'd you move to Hawaii? It's like, well, we came here on vacation and then we just didn't leave. Yeah, exactly. And so... Uh, I had every intention of doing that. <laughs> My dad was like, "Oh, you think that's hilarious?" <laughs> um, <laughs> was it was it a fight to say, "Oh, I'm just going to Thailand even for"? No, actually, my parents have always been pretty cool about that kind of stuff. That's great. I mean, I, I mean, I guess they must. My mom was pretty scared, but I was like, at that point, I turned 21 in in Thailand. Um, so then, so then the thing that actually really got me to come home was that I got this. I got this work experience job at the London 2020, no, London 2012 Olympic Games. Oh, right, yeah, because you worked at the Olympics. Yeah. So that had been like something that had, they had come to our university and said like, would anyone be up for doing this? And we were all like, is it a trick? <laughs> like, <laughs> yes, please. And I was really lucky to be put on the ceremonies, opening, closing ceremonies. Oh, that's cool. And athletics. That's really cool. Yeah, I remember uh, when I got a chance to do it, and I don't. This is not a trip you came on, but when Gavin and I got to go to um, <clears throat> Austria and go to the yeah. uh, Winter Games for uh, Special Olympics, and it was just like it's such a cool thing to be. Part it of. was really great. The feel, like, just like the atmosphere. I remember that those. I mean, I was on the Olympics and the Paralympics. There was like three weeks, nearly a full month, and just the like the feeling of walking around and being part of that thing was so incredible. Yeah. And like everyone, once in a lifetime, really. It really was, yeah. It was amazing. Um, we had all these camera guys saying, like, well, they they felt sorry for us because this was the best job we would ever have. I get it. I mean, I've I've, <laughs> I've thought about that sometimes. I mean, it's like, uh, you know, going back to the old stories of Rooster Teeth. It's like I remember being in the bedroom and everything. Now and it's like I remember when it was like impossible to get stuff made. You know? Yeah. It's like we just, you know, not that it's you know a breeze these days. You're in the middle of going through 
developing a new show right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, it is. It takes, it, these things do take a long time, and that was just like such an amazing, like, collision of luck and timing. And you know, if I hadn't been in that year at that college, and they hadn't come to us, and you know, it would have been, it wouldn't have happened. So. So let me ask you this, because your voice is is <coughs> trailing off here. What do you do to take care of your voice? Because you're a singer. Yeah. Oh, well, a lot of hot tea. Yeah. Which I'm trying to do now. Um. And mainly, I, mean, I need to rest more than I do, is the thing. Because we're in, we're in Austin and we get opportunities to play all the time. Right. Which is amazing. And I love doing it. Like, being part of this band is probably my favorite choice that I made this year. Um, it's so, so much fun. But yeah, I mean, I, I need to rest it more and, and do more kind of hot tea and probably more warming up and warming down stuff. Which, yeah. like, I never really, you know, it's kind of like stretching. Like, if you don't do it, then you're not gonna have a voice for a long time. And right? I made a huge mistake in that regard because my character in Red vs. Blue, especially in the early seasons, just yelled a lot. Right. And uh, yeah, now I can make myself go hoarse so <laughs> fast. Like if they need me to yell in something, I'm always like, let's save it till the end. Let's do those shots at the end and I can do like four or five takes and then I will be completely hoarse. Yeah, Miles is the same way. He can't sing falsetto anymore because well, yeah. he had notes, I think. He notes? Yeah. yeah. Through, like, so, um, well, no I'm trying to continue to try and get up to Malibu after. So with the Olympics? After and that the was Olympics. Great experience. Nice yeah, it was amazing. After the Olympics, I then worked as a camera operator in outside broadcasting for like a year and a half, which was like... You're gonna have to move that this picture down here off that window. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's it's gonna, kill, it's gonna kill me. Okay, <laughs> that's good. There you go. Sorry about that. <laughs> picture of <over> a <laughs> window. Uh, and my favorite job doing that was I got to work with the Royal Shakespeare Company. Oh, my award ceremony. <laughs> <laughs> what did I get? Oh, yeah. Dude, I've never gotten that many. Really? You're just like playing, clicking on the fly. I, I sit here meticulously. I pause the game to plan out what I'm gonna do next, <laughs> and uh, I've only ever gotten like three awards. Yeah, uh, I didn't get no deaths though. That's upsetting. The no deaths one is hard. I knew as soon as that guy died that you were like, yeah, yeah that's it. That reward's over. Long people. Um, I got just to put work another with psychiatrist you. in that room. Have p two people doing therapy at one time. <laughs> just, can you can you quiet down, please? <laughs> we're trying to excuse me. We've got some serious daddy issues that we're working. I'm on really here. focused on me right Look now. This guy's beret. Look at her hair! This game is amazing. <laughs> like, it's so detailed that this guy's doing all this right now, and then over here, what's going on? Does it look similar to the, uh... I mean, the other one was obviously, it came out in 1997. So. Ah. But, I mean, yes, kind of. You still have this little advisor guy who pops up and... Kind of a, if I may, a little bit of a Wallace and Gromit yes. aesthetic? Yes! Yeah, you, you absolutely may. Um, uh, yeah, so I got to work with the RSC on the their production um, of... Richard the Second, starring David Tennant. Oh wow! Yeah, which was very really cool. And we David did... Tennant, the star of Genlock. Uh, well, star of Doctor Who. Calm down. Did you see the new Doctor <laughs> Who last night? Yes, I did. It's amazing. Ashley was beside herself with joy. It's really really cool. Um, I really, I, it's turned it's turned my opinion. I must say, I was a little like, oh gosh, what if they're messing with like the lore of the story? But no, they they're amazing. They've done it. That's an amazing job on it. Um, and then yeah, and then I went into production Malibu, and here I am. That's the story. How'd you find your way to Rooster Teeth? I, gosh, how did I? I was working at Houndstooth Coffee, world's <laughs> worst barista, and I've it's got one of my favorite stories. <laughs> it, it's it, Houndstooth is, if I may, a rather pretentious, snooty coffee shop. It is. And so, Ellie, as a barista, you had to <laughs> rate coffees on a weekly basis, right? We had to do these mandatory. They call it cupping. <laughs> Cupping? Yes, where they make these teeny tiny little cups of coffee, and you have to taste it and, and like red, like know where it's from. It's kind of like you know how like being a sommelier, you need, you're supposed to be able to smell a wine and be like, right. oh, it's a Burgundy. Yeah, <laughs> but those are like hundreds of dollars for a bottle of wine. Sure, it's sure, a three dollar sure. cup of coffee. So you're supposed to be able to. And people can taste these tiny little bits of coffee and be like, oh yes, mm, Ethiopian. <laughs> oh, I just ooh, mm, notes of uh, notes of lavender and Burgundy. Yeah, yes. exactly. Ooh, like a morning dew. Mm. And I would just be right. I was kind of a dick about it. And I just wrote coffee in the box every time. <laughs> it tastes like coffee. And this is also Notes coffee. Of coffee. Slightly different, but coffee nonetheless. And they did not love that. And so then I um, I met through, it was one of those situations that, that was like, my husband at the time's best man's friend's friend worked as an art director here in town. And he knew Josh Flanagan from college. So I met with Josh, who introduced me to Will. 
And then I did a day on set with Million Dollars, and then they just said, do, do you want a job? Okay, that's really interesting. I had no idea until you just said it that Josh Flanagan was your connection to the Really? Company. Because it's... he seems to like to tell everyone that. Oh, really? He actually told me the other, the other day, bearing in mind I've worked here for nearly three years, that I owe everything to him. Really? And I was like, that's true, you did get me my job at the Olympics, and thank you for that. Right. I was like, calm down, How dude. How dare you, sir? I know. I was like, yeah, thank you for telling me to go to Bournemouth University. That was really helpful, too. Well, to be fair, Josh owes everything to Chris then, so <laughs> that's, that's a way worse position right, to be in. that's true. But yeah, so Josh Flanagan was the connection, I suppose, yeah. And so it came to work here uh, shortly thereafter, but you're, you just mentioned your husband. Yeah. You actually met him in Thailand, scuba diving. Yes. How, long, how long were you in Thailand? I was in Thailand for about three months. That's amazing. See, that's, yeah. that's, and you even you very quickly glossed over it because it's a big part of... Uh, your culture growing up, but you mentioned gap year. Yes. That is not something we do in the U.S., and oh. it's 100% something we should do. Yeah, such a shame. Such a shame. I like gap year, obviously, for people who don't know, most, a lot of people choose to take a year between school and university to go and... Usually, we, most people work for a bit and save up money and then go traveling, uh, which is, I think, a really cool thing to do. Like, a load of friends that I knew in that year then changed the degree they were going to do mm -hmm. because they maybe tested it out, they did some work experience, realized it wasn't for them. Right. And obviously our degrees work differently that you do one subject for three years. And it also, it really, I think, teaches you what it takes to earn money to do stuff. You yeah. kind of need that experience. Oh my experience. gosh, and a lot of people, it's that that's the first experience of like moving and living away from home. So do you want to open another part of the? I'm yeah. gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go over here. So you can, she's ex buying a plot so she can expand the hospital. Yeah, because look, we've got this horrendous queue for psychiatric happening here. Whoa! I know, I should have been on top of that. That's okay. You're doing two things at once. That's the whole That's point. That's true. Um, so. So it's just, really, I mean, it's just really cool that you take that time and do it. I think yeah. a lot of people in the U.S. feel like if I take a year off after high school, every university is going to hate me. And they're not going to yeah. admit me. No. I mean, I, th I think that's just like kind of the, the pressure that people get sold here. But um, I think the really cool, I mean, so like, for example, Denmark's system works in a completely different way. I'm not uh, entirely au fait with it, but I know that you don't go to university until you're like 22. Really? That's interesting. And you have like a three year sort of mandatory apprenticeship. Of, so you pick something that you want to do. And that can be anything like an instrument or a sport or, you know, some kind of uh, private field of whatever. And then you can then you can go to university for it, or yeah. you can decide that you don't like it, and figure out something else. And they have such a, a, a way, like everyone, pretty like and so many people who use their who actually use their degrees that they got in Denmark. Yeah. And whereas in England and America, so many people don't. Oh, I don't. Yeah, like they went to school for something and you end up working in something completely different. Do you do you have any idea what my degree was in? Wasn't it in something financial? Mm -mm. Computer engineering. So I was gonna write software, and yeah. uh, now I run a, or used to run, founded and used to run for a long time a film company. Yeah. All my friends who are, you know, got communications or film degrees, they don't do that. Right. So weird. It's, yeah, it is such a strange. I don't know why people aren't figuring that out. That being said, had I taken a couple years off and gone to work in the film industry, I probably would not have tried to start one on my own. Right. Well, that's interesting. I was, I thought you were gonna say that you probably. Um, if you'd taken some time off from, and tried to work in film, you wouldn't have gone to university at all. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't have. No, I mean, listen, I'm, JD is just getting to the age where he's starting to look at that, and it's weird to, like, kind of hang back a little bit and not try to influence. But if he came to me and said, I'm not going to university, I, I, that would not be a very long discussion. Right. I'd be like, okay, if you feel like that's best, then okay. That's totally fine. Are yeah. you just, like, plopping down offices, or are you moving that? I'm copying, so you can copy them. <sighs> What? Yeah. <laughs> you just press, you can click on the room. We gotta get better at this game. Just copy. And it saves you so much time. Do you Now, do you like other games like this? Do you like Sims and things like that? I used to, yeah, when I was younger, I played Sims a lot. Um, but I, I don't actually play that many games these uh, days. Yeah. I gotta say. I don't, I'm I, kind of the same way. I... I, I think I tw tweeted something recently that was like, who even, like, who has the time to be an adult? Like, I don't, to me right now, in my life, yep. I have no, no earthly idea um, how people, like, survive having kids. Like, I feel like I barely track my own life. It's crazy. There's so much stuff to do. You know, it's funny because we're about to get into the whole millennial discussion, which I think is super relevant to what you've got going on right yeah, now. Yeah, absolutely. Because, uh, coming to work at Rishi, we worked on the blog together. Uh, and then you went from that uh, into Skill Tree, which was kind of yes. like the natural progression of what we were doing on the blog. So much fun. 
kind of a spiritual successor in a way. Yeah. We just start doing fun adventure stuff because you're experiencing scuba diving and, and everything, and you seem to like be like, all right, let's do this. Let's go climb up on the CN Tower <laughs> yeah. and hang over the edge. Oh yeah. And then uh, and then skill tree just seemed like a really fun way to do that. Should we tell people what the secret of the, all that was, by the way? Go for it. Okay. So when I started doing the vlog, I was trying to do fun stuff. And <laughs> one of the main criticisms that came through was how mad people were at me because I was doing all these ridiculous things. Which, by the way, and you can back me up on this, completely paid out of pocket. Rushi's never, Rushi's never paid for any Not of that stuff. Not a penny of it, no. And uh, so I was doing this stuff, and there were people who got mad and said I was showing off or yeah, something like, like that. Yeah, it was like ostentatious in some way. Yeah. And so instead, then I kind of we kind of started developing... Ellie is a character where I was making her do these things. And so if that I was, you could do them. And so if I made Ellie do them, then people thought it was funny, yeah. but then I got to do them anyway. <laughs> it's so funny how just like the little change in perspective. It did, and it worked. It worked, yeah. It was great. People were much more into me torturing you yeah. by making you do these really fun, cool things. It was such a strange thing that people took umbrage with too, like, because a lot of the times when we were in somewhere somewhere super cool, like they were in Brooklyn or in San Francisco doing something, the flight to get there was more than the thing that we were doing. Right. I think in particular, <laughs> the one that people got really upset about was the helicopter trip that I took, which was a gift for Ashley on her birthday. Yeah. And it was, uh, I think it was $800 yeah. spent on that helicopter trip, which was fucking amazing. Yeah, it was the amazing. The flights to San Francisco cost about 900 for two people. Yeah. Terrible, terrible tour guide on that, but... Oh, yeah, he wasn't great. He just kept telling you how much you knew about San Francisco. He was like, and yeah, obviously, you guys, I don't even say, as you know, this is the thing. And we'd be like, no, we don't. Tell us. Then he did a really cool thing, though, mm -hmm. uh, where he took us down to about, what, 10 feet off oh, the top of the water? Yeah, that was amazing. Just so we get a sense of how fast that helicopter would go, that was amazing. That was so, so cool. Yeah. What was the most fun thing that you did? Yeah, uh, for the vlog. Man, dude, every time I think about it, like, it blows my mind the, the amount of cool things we were able to go do. Um, the barrier reef was incredible. Like, I would never have been able to do that without, like, without you. So that was super awesome. Um, Tell Josh. Josh Flanagan. Uh, <laughs> without Josh, sorry, that's what I meant. Uh, I mean, the barrier reef always is something that I go back to. That was just such an amazing time. Um, gosh, we just we did so much, didn't we? I thought the one you did the best that was sniper school sniper school if you're talking about like skill tree skill learning stuff yeah. sniper school was incredible um partly because it was a really interesting experience being um how do I say it? being around a bunch of people who think very very differently to me have mm -hmm. incredibly different lives to me it's very obviously like uh, we're out in the Texas Hill Country and with a bunch of ex-military guys and they kind were of not as much Obama as, fans they Let's were not Obama way. fans no um and you know, I mean, they, we had some really interesting conversations about that. And that was actually a really cool thing to be able to do was to sit down and listen to other people's stories and have a civil conversation about why we think differently it was something that like, I don't think many people do anymore uh, without it devolving into some kind of us, you and you and me, you versus me thing. Mm -hmm. um, and that was just, so being able to do that and have that experience really kind of opened my eyes into like how, how chatting about politics and chatting about current affairs should be done. And that like, we were never going to change each other's minds, but that was never the focus. It was just like, so, okay, so I understand why you, like, why you feel this way. And that was, like, yeah, that was a cool experience. And then also, you know, getting to learn how to shoot a sniper rifle. And fair to say that uh, you were not a gun person. No, gosh, yeah. no, no. We, I mean, I think we definitely had chats about it when we started doing all that skill stuff. It's like, is this something we'd be comfortable doing? Mm -hmm. uh, and, I mean, I would still never, I don't ever feel the need to own a gun personally. It's not, it's not changed my mind on that. But learning how to take care of one and, and a lot of the things that they focused on was, like, the responsibility of owning a gun. And that was really cool too. Um, so, well, yeah, it was a crazy experience. That was probably my favorite in terms of like skill learning, apart like you know, apart from the show that we we got to make, which mm -hmm. was really cool. And then you went on from there and made Skill Tree. Mm -hmm. And uh, what is the status of Skill Tree now? I I keep asking. <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, I got uh, notes from programming that they would like to make more. It just t depends on how that turns out. So Drew and I have turned in a green sheet. It's probably more of like a production conversation, but we've turned in a green sheet. So just kind of, I'm, I'm hoping. I'm just waiting to hear on that. Yeah. But well, there was a. I remember the one of the things that 
change a lot. There was, in particular, a sponsor that got really interested in it. Yeah, at one time that would have been like, and it was would have been an absolute perfect match. It would have been great. Um, so we were kind of, I think that's the way that they would like to go is maybe see if if we can get someone like that to sponsor the show, um, so that we can do bigger, cooler things. Um, Gosh, I gotta say, it's like something that people who you know in the community might not be aware of. And I think that we're better than most places, but it's just, it's incredible how much stuff we work on that then doesn't, doesn't go, go anywhere. anywhere. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't come out or doesn't, you know, and it's usually things like, oh, there's a really cool sponsor that wants to sponsor Skill Tree. It makes perfect sense. It's not just like a random sponsor. Yeah. It's like a perfect sponsor for the show and we should tool, so, tool it so it makes sense. It was really cool. Yeah, we worked on this like huge proposal, a whole document of how it could go, and we were feeling so good about it, and then it just came as back of like, nah. Yeah, we're gonna do a TV commercial, you know, like, or something like uh, that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and that that is a frustrating process, but when it, you know, when it lands, it's good, yeah. you know? It's but always it, worth it for the one that, that you get, you know? Yeah, but we, we're not gonna also sit around and talk about the things we're working on or, you know, hoping are gonna happen, you know? Yeah. I mean, you have something that you're working on that's in, development that's a rooster teeth show yes you've been working on it for a while yeah we've, we pitched it in back in january and we've been going through the motions of going through development and trying to get a script to a good place but i'm feeling really good about it at the moment i'm very you know a bit, it, people have been managing my expectations and i understand that but i'm hoping that this one comes through mm -hmm. and it's uh have we have you talked about it ever publicly before I, I haven't, but I, I, I'd love to if we're allowed. Yeah, this one, I think so. Why not, right? I mean, this is, uh, it's a new scripted show that you're mm -hmm. working on. Yeah. Uh, it's you you and Chelsea Harfouche. Chelsea Harfouche. I like to call her Charfouche. Charfouche. My mom likes to call her Chelsea Hardflush. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I mean, with, uh, without going too much into it, it's, uh, why don't, you, why don't you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, so, it's essentially uh, a bunch of girls and gays that get together and... <laughs> Um, start a accidental crime ring in order to just to pay off their student debt. Mm -hmm. um, it's very much sort of uh, insecure meets. Meat. Okay, kind of like in if insecure and Breaking Bad had a baby, <laughs> we would like to think so. It's got that kind of observational cringe comedy, but never to the extent of like Ricky Gervais. Yeah. It's more just like, oh, I've done that, or like I that that resonates with me a lot. Um, and it's kind of. We really want to explore, like, what would it take to make you or me to say, hey, fuck it, I'm going to do this right. insane thing. Right. Um, and it's a younger show written by younger people Yeah. for that audience. When I say younger, I don't mean, like, 13 years old. It's mainly for people that are between the ages of, like, 18 and 25. Yeah, and it's, it's very much, you know, uh, it's got different levels to it that I really have really enjoyed exploring. And a lot of it's kind of boomers versus millennials. Right. Okay. In fact, we should we shouldn't talk about people in terms of demographics with age. We should just say it's people who have fifty thousand dollars or greater of student debt. <laughs> yes. That's like a whole new demographic. Yeah, we, we were playing. Uh, I was playing Mario Party last night, and my friend Tyler was like, "God, I remember like in the like in the N sixty four one, like you had like two hundred coins." And I was like, "Yeah, that's the boomers Mario Party." <laughs> now we have like all these guys are renting and they're just arguing about who is the superstar. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so it's like there's a big part of it that's like. Uh, kind of these expectations and and it's the thing that we like that we're really enjoying exploring is this kind of entitlement versus enlightenment thing right of like is it too much to ask to like enjoy your working life and to be paid accordingly for that it's like is that really like you know going over the top um, and at the same time like we are is it existing in, a, in an economy that is not does not want to play with us mm -hmm. So it is kind of, but it's exploring both of those, both sides of the argument and making fun of both. Right. Also, but can you be too woke to the point exactly. where you're not, you don't enjoy your own life? Yeah, there's an amazing sketch in a British show that came out recently of the um, uh, woke support group for people that are too woke. <laughs> I, I saw that. <laughs> it's so good. And like, like, you can't do I have to worry about water now? Like, <laughs> and they're so like, okay, guys, listen up. And they're like, guys, this is actually um, right. kind of not in a very inclusive term. Like, Shut up, Oliver. They can't <laughs> have a conversation. It's just like everything is the analysis of what's being said. I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. It's Yeah, uh, I'm excited uh, about it. Uh, you haven't said the name of the show yet. Yeah, it's, so it's called Deferred. Um, we, I want to really want to tell the story. So in our pitch, Chelsea and I, we decided on deferred because it's like deferred loan payments, obviously. 
but also this kind of idea of maybe deferring adulthood in some way and mm-hmm. deferring responsibility. Right. Um, Talks about the characters themselves. Yeah, exactly. It's multifaceted. And we also <laughs> decided to include a poem in our pitch. <laughs> Langston Hughes, if I recall correctly. A Dream Deferred, which was actually highly relevant because it's about if you don't deal with a dream, then it explodes, right? It's this kind of like action, sure. like it, what, what happens if... Yeah, sure, your dreams don't happen, and so you kind of implode, explode. And um, <laughs> Matt immediately was like, so did you did you guys put this in as a joke? <laughs> <laughs> and Chelsea, who's like, uh, has a lightning wit, just immediately fired back. She's like, no, we put that in so that you know we went to college. <laughs> um, yeah, it was very funny. So now we like we wanted to send around a message that was like, guys, Matt hates poetry. Like, never include any. Like, do not refer to poetry. So if I, if what Matt actually said was, you know, this was I don't want to I don't want to pigeonhole it as any one thing in particular. Uh-huh. But this is our younger people. Are you a millennial? I don't even know what millennial means so. anymore. I but, think I am. I mean, it was it's the word that gets used all the time. So I remember this not is, having a phone. Does that count? I think so. Yeah. I think so. I think it's like anybody. What does millennial mean? It's just like around the year 2000, you were alive? Is yeah. that what it means? Around the year 2000, you're sort of becoming a human, like not going from a child to like... But it's gotta be, there's gotta be other groups now. Anyway, I don't wanna get lost in this. But, <laughs> but we were, uh, we Matt was essentially saying, you know, this is our essentially millennial comedy uh, written by younger people. And he said, and I couldn't imagine anything more millennial than including a Langston Hughes poem. Well, in, then you're in, welcome. In the opening of it, so. <laughs> He said, he's like, I really think, listen, the poem worked. Even though Matt called it out and made fun of it, it's what he took away. And he remembered that, I guess. He just remembered the poem <laughs> stuck in there. Well, if we ever, if it comes out and we have a party, I'm going to print it in like <laughs> huge and just put it everywhere. It's be like a poetry themed party. You can make it the cruise shirts. <laughs> you can do it. We so, do want to have, there's like a, a part in one of the kind of scripts that we've thought about for a, for not for the pilot for a different episode mm-hmm. where one of our main characters is, is going to like a leftist poetry reading and trying to get everyone to go with him and everyone's like no absolutely not why would i do that <laughs> but yeah so and maybe we have to just take this poetry thing and run with it and right now so you pitched that at pitch fest which yeah. is this two-day extravaganza that we have we're about to have another one we're about to have another one um and uh then we take those ideas and put them into development and mm-hmm. development here is taking a little bit longer I would say this though, particularly at Rooster Teeth right now at this point in time, anything that is, what is that? A little mouse, you gotta oh, really? get them. Yeah. Uh, a little, uh, uh, things that take a little bit longer are anything that is live action and scripted. It's true. That 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 stuff takes a lot longer. Well, it's a big, I mean, because especially, they, I mean, they demand a higher budget than certain things, so you want to be sure. Yes. That it's, that it's going to be good, and you can never, you know, be 100% sure, but... You want to be as confident as you can. Right. We totally understand that. And actually, in the scheme of things, this is fa- we have a fast development track. Mm-hmm. You know, there are people who work on projects for a decade yeah. that yes. either never get made or finally get made. And so, and, you know, it's, it has been there have been times where I'm like, I wish that it could be faster. At the same time, I have to you have to stay in perspective that like actually this is fast. So I would say this is probably like whenever we have our next pilot period, yeah. which last year was in May. Um, you hopefully be able to see deferred yes. pilot during that. And we're hoping, <laughs> Jesse and I are hoping that with some of the Genlock buzz, we could get some pretty cool people in it. Oh, that'd be really cool. Really fun. Yeah. Not just their voices, but also their faces as well. It's a, you know, it's a little bit tougher once again. I mean, it's one of the differences between live action and animation. Um, you know, Mr. David Tennant. Is Sir David Tennant? Is he United? Or is no, he but he should be. Yeah. He's Scottish, correct? <laughs> yes, yes. So he could be. At some point, it's but like, yeah. but uh, David Tennant, getting him to voice a character in Genlock, even if he is a you know heavy supporting character or a primary character, a whole season might take him a day to record. Yes. Yeah. Whereas, I mean, if he's in one episode of a live action thing, that could be five or six days. Yeah, right? absolutely. So it's a bigger commitment, and those things get a little bit more, a little, a little bit more. Uh, uh, I don't know, uh, just detailed. Yeah. As, you know, you're trying to work through like what people can do and what they can't do. We're already building an amazing team there. Like Ezra, we've got Ezra Vanitos, who is just so awesome. He's great. He's amazing. He's one of producer. our producers. Produced uh, Cheeman Haunter would yeah. be one that people would know him for. He's produced tons of stuff. Day five as well. He's one uh, of the champions in the background. He's great. Yeah, and, and he's he he met with Chelsea and I. He asked us to go for a drink, and we were like, we had no idea what this was going to be about, and we kind of think, thought it was going to be like, this is cool, but like. 
I just want to like we thought it was gonna be more managing expectations. Stay out of my territory. You know, kind of just like, hey guys, this is great that you're doing this, but like, just don't get your hopes up. But we sat down and he, oh, you promoted just, somebody. Just won the level. They yeah. did. Bang. That's good Boom. timing. Um, yeah, and he was like, this is great. I'm really excited for it, and I want to help. And so. you're also working with Drew Saplin. I'm working with Drew. You Saplin. mentioned him a little bit earlier. Yes. We're well. Currently, we're working on a holiday show together. Oh right. Um, and Drew was the like amazing help with Skill Tree. He was the director and helped build that show. Mm -hmm. It was really me, me, Drew, and Chelsea that put that whole thing together. I think he's the only person to direct any million dollars butt episodes besides Blaine. Yes, I Maybe. think so. There might be somebody. Oh, else I think there. they um, Stephanie did yes. one recently. Yeah. But yeah, he was definitely kind of. The, he was the the two point on that. He was the go to guy. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, he, yeah, I love working with Drew. I think he's one of my he's one of my favorite kind of creatives here. We just our brains work the same. We find the same things funny. Yeah. Which is cool. Um, excited so we, about this? Excited about the show and everything? I'm so excited. New script just came in. I'm so excited. I mean, it's been a lot of hurry up and wait. So I'm excited to it happens. get a lot of different things moving. Obviously, we've got the lab going too. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I'm I'm super excited. For, I'm, I'm I think that like it's just gonna for a lot of people. I think people are tying things up, ready to start the next year really strong. Yep. And like, so I'm excited for what we have next year going on here. And we're doing some, yeah, we're doing some different things too, which will become clear, I think, pretty soon of like what we're doing to kind of shore yeah. up our live action stuff mm -hmm. and kind of get down to brass tacks with that as well. And really so. exci like, exciting and motivating changes for a lot of people, I think. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, Ellie, congrats on all your success. And congrats you. on being such a great hospital administrator. I know I always have this to fall back on, right? Always. I could use this as experience. Sure. And listen, if you, there's a cartoon hospital somewhere in the world where people have With, sirens on their head and yeah. think they're Freddie Mercury, you're the person for the job. We've got a reality star as the president. I could be a hospital administrator. <laughs> I've got the experience. That's a good point. <laughs> That's a good point. Aren't you glad that you can't <laughs> elect a queen? Yeah. Yeah. And she's amazing. God. But yeah, oh, thanks, Bernie. Thanks, Ellie. See you later. Bye.